Yeah. And it wasn't even connected, it was wrapped around the other wire. It's just propagating right down the line. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, that little secret we cut to ourselves. Is it anything longer or shorter? Didn't matter. As long as it wasn't that even multiple. Didn't matter. But you know, again, like it was a <coughs> we we when we first built this one, it was using S, SSI and MSI components, and we finally had a custom LSI chip made. So we significantly reduced the size of the board we needed. But I couldn't change the board size because it would screw up the configuration of the inside. So I had one time, one of the models had this great big board with about three ICs on it. <laughs> and that was to maintain that we could still stick the connect cabinet points out here, connect everything in the back and everything else. So until we came up with this model, then we could change the PC board and shrink it down in size. But that's one of the things, yes. How many different models of the uh, general order? There were two basic design models as far as exterior, and maybe five internal ones. Over a period of years? Two years. Wow. We did the whole design and put it in manufacturing in six months. I mean, Brendan Majestic, the president, congratulated me and my group for doing it in six months. Our own management didn't realize it. They just thought, oh, you know. Because all they were interested in, all they knew was semiconductors. So it started in 1975? Mm -hmm. How big was the, how many people was this total group? Working for me as engineering, about 30 guys. I had all the software guys. I ended up also all the <coughs> I ended up in marketing at the end. It was a hot baby that nobody else wanted to so say, dumped into my life. Very high-paid, cushy jobs, fancy chairs, all that. Right? Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> what was the resolution of the uh, video display? Uh, uh, it was less than 128 across. Okay. And did it have, um, was it actually a full state map in memory? Or is it actually like 2600 from Atari? You had to sort of um, draw it as you went along and register it. The bitmap in uh, Atari didn't exist like they, they used Sprite technology. Yeah, yeah, but Sprite had a pretty cool register for one line. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. line buffer. Line so buffer, yeah. yeah. Did you guys have a full bitmap? We yeah. had a full screen. Yeah. yeah. Oh. It's a raster display. Yeah. You were going to finish that story about the contest for the game. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, there was <coughs> a guy, we, we ran this contest trying to solicit more ideas on how to do a game. And uh, I ran the contest, and one of the security guards gave an interest. In fact, what happened was uh, we also had Fairchild Magnetics in Michigan. They called me and said, you guys know we exist. You know, <laughs> yeah. And uh, they were contributing too. And uh, the guy wanted, he wanted for a thing called Wizbo. And it was a rather cute idea. We had a human doing it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, again, like I said, it was uh, one of the things I, I, I like to impose to uh, impress to young youngsters is that a lot of the schools are telling them be gamesters, do games. In fact, they're trying to promote a uh, whole industry around it. It's, it's not really honest what they're telling them. Because today's games are not done by single entities, they're done by groups of people. We're talking about, and many people are going to take to make a movie. We're talking about voices that are put in of actors. We're talking about uh, artists that are working on scenario people. The only thing I don't like about today's games is that they don't teach our youth anything. There should be some kind of uh, goal and objective for them to learn something. I'd like to see him steer more to scientific endeavors, not to come out and say, okay, I uh, shot down 50 miles Martians today. No, I'd like to see you do something that makes you think about the next generation of things. Because I think we're, we, we're owed that to them. We need to have them develop that way. You know, we're getting to be old farts, and somebody's got to take over, all right? Any more questions? Yes. Um, the FAC CPU that's used 
The original F8, I didn't know you started. The original F8 was made by a company called Olympus. Camera people? Yeah? The camera people? Mm-hmm. Okay. And Olympus, Olympus, excuse me, Olympa. Look at it. What happened was, <laughs> what happened was they were talking to a company called General Instrument in New York about making this chip for them. Uh, one of the GI had decided not to do it. And uh, one of the uh, designers and uh, physicists by the name of Dr. Chung left GI and came to Fairchild and came with this F8 idea. And the idea that would made it different was that it didn't have really addressable chips like you would normally see in a microcomputer or microprocessor. It had a bus configuration, but everything was kept inside the bus. In fact, if we wanted to talk to a standard memory, we had to have a special peripheral chip to do that. The chips themselves were ROM chips, as far as each ROM chip came with two I.O. ports. There were two I.O. ports on the CPU. Every ROM chip had two I.O.s, two 8-bit I.O.s. And as you expand them out, you picked up two I.O. ports. In fact, again, my glass discovered something one day we were running out. We only had 64 uh, bits of RAM in our book. And Mike came to me and said he found four more uh, registers. I said, get out of here. So it's only 64. And he smiled and said, I found two that nobody knows about. I said, what's that? He said, the two that are in the cartridge that are I.O. that we've never used. They test them, and they're there to sit in there. So I go out and use them. He set them down. He was using those. But like I said, he was a very clever guy. He, he was a true gamester. He loved games. What was the development environment like? How did you guys make games? Kind of Tooth and nail. <laughs> uh, our development system was called an FAS, which was a their circuit board had switches on it. Our uh, input and output function was an ASR33, and we used paper tape. In fact, the operating system for the F8 game would have stretched from here into the next room and the other room. And I used to have to watch it that it wouldn't get torn. <laughs> we would load it in and go down the hall and just watch it come back for us how big it was. Because we had no real memory functions storing it away. That was in the future. Yeah, one, one more question about the, uh, the sound. When, uh, I know someone was asking about the sound, and uh, one of the things that was a little bit mysterious to me is, uh, um, I guess, when you, the, with the original Channel F, it, uh, the sound, it's similar to uh, Pong, where you have, you know, vertical, um, you have the vertical scan rates, and so you've got certain ones that you can, you can pick from. There's like three different combinations that you can pick from. Mm -hmm. But it seems like you could only make tones that are uh, that only last for a small amount of time there's like it's a, it's a beep and then even if you, you you write to a register to say make a sound it beeps and then it but it doesn't make a continuous tone um, and uh, and and so uh, I thought that's how it actually worked and then of course somebody I talked to on the internet uh, sent me something from one of the uh, cartridges from one of the foreign versions of the thing and the, they have one cartridge that's written and it runs on one of those foreign variations of the of the design, and it, it has continuous tone music as mm -hmm. one of the one of the features of the game. Mm -hmm. And as far as I know, that it, it only worked on one kind of a uh, you know channel F variation. I just wondered if you knew anything about that or who it was wasn't because we didn't. first of all, what happened was <coughs> we found if you varied the sound too much, you didn't have time to go back and refresh the stuff on the screen. So it was a time for it. Mm -hmm. Plus, what happened was that it was very easy for us to make a simple sound because it was in the operating system. You just go out and say, do that. See, the other trick, trick we did too was that, are you familiar with self-erasing characters? Self-erasing. Oh, uh, 